just nagging the elk in, in the next yeah. two picks. So it'll be very crucial. I mean, if EG doesn't pick the elk and they see the elk on OG, they, they have a lot of time to prepare for the alchemy. So they can take the timber saw themselves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, that's, that is a good uh, lane matchup for. Good lane matchup. Good hero yeah. overall the, throughout the game to kill the timber saw. I mean, sorry, the the alchemist. Yeah, clears the illusions easily. Clears uh, everything easily. So they go for the ogre. Okay. Keeping things open. Yeah. They they want to see what o OG is doing. Like the beauty of this pick right now is Dark you, you gotta wait and see what the enemy will do. I think this is where they probably should grab either, yeah, probably the Timber Saw, the, even if they want, I mean, maybe it's, it's probably early for an Ursa, but okay, they do it anyway. So it's probably the best matchup versus an Alchemist in a 1v1 lane. Alright, best matchup for an Ursa in the 1v1 lane, he just destroy. he completely destroys Alchemist. So are we gonna see some supports helping out then? Last, uh, or yesterday rather, Evil Genius has had an IO backing up the Ursa as well, mm. helping yeah. out. Does that mean that OG needs to have a support that will stick with that Alchemist and help him out in mid? Pro probably, yeah. yeah. High chance. But I think the Ursa okay. crushes Alchemist a yeah, bit he, harder he crushes than DK. I oh, know, it was Timber. Was it Timber? Like... No, it was, it was Ursa versus DK. They had oh, the Ursa versus yeah. DK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alchemist has a harder... Yeah, you're right. Alchemist has a harder time against Ursa. Like, Ursa and Timber are both EG's of the scariest heroes for Alch yeah. in the laning phase. So. And obviously, because you have the ogre, so Ursa is a better hero to use the bloodlust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the small movement speed bonus, because we do see a lot of players go for like this, uh, like the, the wind, wind lace, lace early on the Ursa. So mm -hmm. if you do have bloodlust and you already have high movement speed, Alchemist just gets chased down very easily. You were gonna mention uh, Earth Spirit, right? For OG. For OG, because they already have the Darks here. I'm thinking about the Darks here opening here for them. Uh, what is what is the plan actually with with the Darks here? here? Probably just want to have some something that can like early fight with away from the alchemist, right? Dark series suit like the king of team fights. So. Yeah, but then generally when you have alchemist, you you, you don't want an off laner that farms a lot though. Dark series farms a lot for an off laner. You mm. you want like Nyx, clock, bat rider, this kind of off laners to make space. So might might be something different, but I'm not sure how well it will work this game with the alchemist. So no till is getting uh, targeted by evil geniuses right now with also the terror blade removed. Yeah. TB is a great com a combo with the Alchemist, just yeah. because you can pressure towers, you can pressure objectives very easily mm. with that. So which heroes are left for him? Draw. That's the draw. <laughs> still for, the draw. for No Tail? Yeah. For no -tail. They're still Juggernaut, right, too? I mean, it's not yeah. the greatest matchup versus the Ursa, but they do really like having him on that. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're talking about good matchups against Ursa, most of his heroes as a carry position don't match up very well, but you're going to rely on your supports to you know, make sure that the Ursa gets kited, you move him around. They're really hoping Lion is gonna get it's picked. Not, yeah, that's not happening. I don't think so either. Well, yeah, the, the we, the, they ban out the Weaver. Weaver is very uh, mobile. Very difficult for Ursa to stick on him and kill him. So that's a very targeted ban to protect the Ursa. Is, um, with the Darks here on the side of OG, could we see the Jarek Slardar again? Also pretty decent against an Ursa. It did bother Winter last time we saw it though. Yeah. Is this a better scenario? I would just prefer the Earth Spirit. They would do the same thing. But I mean, obviously with uh, Slardar you have the sort of like easier... Vacuum into Slardar Crush is easier than vacuum into the kick from Earth Spirit, I'm gonna say. And you have the amp damage to, you know, further increase the minus armor. You already have the Alchemist. And also, Slada is very good uh, against the Alchemist. Yeah. Ogre Magi, I believe it or not, has now been picked in nearly 50%, just under 50% of all of the games here in the Boston Major, at least in the offline part. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the Bloodlust Machine. The Bloodlust Machine. Very exciting. Uh, er everyone would tell you. Five minutes, you run, you hit people, then the rest of the game you're just casting Just, follow, you're just follow casting them around. Them. But you have a very fun first five minutes. <laughs> yep, indeed. Go hit everyone with your high armor and then proceed to just... I think Samil's hair is a little bit more white on the side, guys, at the moment. Mm. Sorry. Is it, what, what would you describe Correct. the color of Samil's hair, though? I've been unable to pinpoint it. Uh, well, it was green. It's... And now it's green. slightly washed out green because it was a while oh, it's ago. Washed out green, it okay. was a while ago that it was green. So, um, and I, I hope that like he wasn't name. cheering for uh, for the green team. OG, you, <laughs> you know, dream you, green. <laughs> I think EG will go for something like an AA relatively early since they're versus Darkseid, who gets the mech, and it's versus an Alchemist, which is extremely favorable versus them. I mean, they have done it in the past again. Out. I wouldn't put it past them, but uh, like we talk about, AA, AA is like a. You hero. raise a lot of questions <laughs> as AA for a support role. Like yeah. I, I don't know, but it's definitely great against the Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Come on. 
Look at this venue. It's, it's so gorgeous. And the people make it even more beautiful. Well, I do. Oh, I like it. If you look at, I mean, I just love that when we have those wide angles, you can see the uh, the ceiling and the, uh, I don't want to say architecture, but the decoration around it is pretty sweet. Do be sure to uh, look up occasionally. Mm. I know your eyes are going to be locked on the Dota, but if you are here in the Wang Theatre, do look around. Take it all in while we do get this draft continued. They're really burning a lot of time on this third pick. Yeah. Probably deciding if they want to grab universes or reveal their second support. I mean, as far as universes hero goes, Clockwork, we, I mean, we saw an amazing show in from uh, S4 previous True. game. We know that Universe can do that too. Are we going to see? Yeah, running out. Mm. It's a Rubik, so yeah, not revealing anything yet. You know, I always say that right now in the in the meta, when you don't know what to go for, you just pick Rubik. Rubik <laughs> can't, you, you can't really go wrong with Rubik. Rubik is so good in the meta because of all the heroes that are in the meta. A lot mm -hmm. of good spells to steal. And it's just a very good lane as well with the Ursa, mm. if you, if you want to have an Ursa safe lane. So is, Ursa. is it hard to identify flaws in Rubik? Yes, very difficult. Yeah. You, think that, you think it'll be an Ursa safe lane? No, I mean, you have the option oh, to do Oh, okay, that. gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still think it's going to be mid, but... Yeah, yeah, okay. How much uh, roaming potential does that give um, a Rubik and an Ogre in this case, with already knowing that... Pretty good, actually. Yeah? yeah pretty good. He actually has a mad win percentage as well, if I'm not mistaken. Closing in on 60% win rate with Rubik. The typical fly hero. A, yeah, this is a throwback to the old OG. Indeed, and it is in pair with the Slardar, so there's a lot of armor coming out from uh, from OG. They do lack initiate or stuns rather, depending on if the Slardar gets to be able, I guess, to have a blink dagger fast or not, and if it's a, yeah, it probably will be a Jarek Slardar. So. Has. We do like seeing Saxon Slacks on the screen. They go, yeah, the Morphling wasn't banned. Good matchup versus the Alchemist. They, like you said, they don't really have a crazy amount of disable mm -hmm. on their side, so... Banned in game one, available for game two. They don't, you know, their heroes are not very good at killing the Morphling either, and he has a very high armor to deal with all the uh, armor reduction, the Amp, the Weave, Acid Spray. I mean, all in all, I think EG has a very strong response to what uh, OG are trying to build in into this mm -hmm. like team fight slash uh, farming kind of lineup. Team fight and farm. You you want to farm and team fight basically with the Elk and the Darks here. So what hero is left there for No Tail? This is difficult though. Um, EG's turn to ban. What what do you think about like running Slada as a carry here? That's I was gonna ask you actually the same thing. I think it could. I think it's viable for sure. I think they can still go and for something like the Earth Spirit, because like yeah, it's, it's very good versus the Morphling still. You need a silence against Morphling. Yeah. And it would also mean that you get that Blink Dagger in time, so you get the initiation properly. They don't have a lot of lockdown, so all the lockdown that they do have, they gotta try to get online fast enough for But I don't think I've seen them done that, right? I, I don't recall safe They slot. haven't done it recently, but we know that No-Till can play Slardar. Yeah. He has played, like, he has had a very long career playing multiple roles. Slardar is one of the heroes that uh, he is capable with. And it, it kind of fits his playstyle as well. They're still the clockwork. So they go for the clockwork, yeah. I do, I do like the uh, Slardar, though, because it gives the time to make space for the Alchemist, and mm. we always say that No-Till is kind of like the sacrificial lamb for yeah. his mid lane. Fits. Uh, Evil Geniuses think it's going to be a support Slardar, though. They ban out the Lifestealer, which was still in the pool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's time to reveal. Actually, OG doesn't have to reveal anything yet. They got him over a minute still to think about this. Just one. have a chat, start yeah. talking about their day, talking about their wards, and no, never mind. Never mind, it's an OD. It's an OD. So. Who's playing why? We got the. So it's no a no playing Alchemist. Alchemist. Okay, so they don't okay. want. Okay, so that's a cool approach to dodge the Ursa. You don't want to put him in the mid lane because it's just an impossible matchup for him. So they're going to put a safe lane Alchemist in an OD mid versus Ursa, which is that's a pretty fine matchup for OD. Yeah, decent. Wow. Yeah, is, very good matchup. Yep. It is kind of a little cliche, but it does co all come down to this. EG have looked so good in the playoffs. Yeah. It wasn't a pretty group stage, but they've managed to not only take down Wings defending TI champions, they've also then proceeded to take down up and comers and very exciting premise VP. And now, OG can throw the knockout blow. One more game, or will EG take us into a third to tell you? Who will be taking it to the grand finals, or if we'll be seeing a third, is a casting duo that I have a fantastic new nickname for. It's Gods and Toby One, it's the Didgeridoo. Oh, machine, machine, machine. We had like such high hopes for Oh, him. that was brilliant, Toby. You enjoyed that? <laughs> uh, no. I'm loving Machine. I, I mean, well, it's, it's a great addition to the event. Yes. Yes, until then. <laughs> All right, we're going to get ourselves into game number two. OG up against EG. This time around, EG have got their hands on two of the most successful heroes OG had in the first map of this series. I am interested to see how it's all going to fall down. Like, EG, can they get this combination off? You're running a dire side Ursa. 
You're still up against Amplification, you're up against the Alchemist, which have been really successful in mid before. But now we've also got the OD and the Alchemist in the same game together for OG. I mean, it's definitely a draft advantage in some... Like, not to say they've won the draft, but it, it's a catches EG by surprise when the OD comes out. They were expecting OG to just send the Alk mid, like you always almost do. Yeah, it's a rough matchup for Zersa, but EG's probably thinking, we're going to win that matchup, and then we have to make sure we contest the stacks and we can win the game. Mm -hmm. And OG just say, we're not going to let you play your game plan. We're going to run a safe lane Alchemist. Now, the downside of this is Alk is not really a natural safe lane hero so much. Doesn't really zone off Liz all, all, all too well, so Clockwork should get a lot out of the off lane, but... Still a much better matchup and a great game for an OD. He light lanes very well against Ursa. He's a good kind of matchup against the Morphling as well. So really nice last pick for OG. Um, also something to keep in mind too is the fact that OG is going to move their lanes very quickly. With that Iron Talon recipe already sitting on Notel, you know he's going to slip into the jungle. And then it's going to be the amplification of farm for Jirax, which is what OG love to prioritize. So with that, the initiation timing of OG should die come up a little bit faster than normal. Nice little play from No-Tail to get the... They realize the bottom's being contested. He walks top with the TP scroll and he's bottom to get the creep block. This creep block, very important. You're against the clockwork lane. You know he's going to cogs in his wave. Uh, so Universe is going to pull his way back. No-Tail needs to get a good block off. And he's going to do just that with that TP. So it should be a slightly more manageable lane uh, for the OG tri lane because of that. And Universe's cogs is, almost doesn't feel like it happened because of how well No-Tail blocked this lane. Yep. And he gets the range creep in front as well, so he'll, he'll make sure that dies. Everything kind of done well in the OG safe lane. All the small little nitpicky things which make a big difference. Anything to give that Alchemist advantage at the start. Always going to pay off. Universe can burn all the mana he wants on that bottom lane. It's not going to really mean that much as uh, Fly starts his pull through. Jirax taking the damage against Zai just to create more space. And S4, like, you're not playing a clockwork this time around. You're uh, you're level 2 now, Darkseer. But he went in very, very deep on Arteezy as well as crit. Cut all the way in behind the, behind the tower. Yeah, so for OG, S4 at top has got his level 2, which means Is he? feeling a bit more confident to be able to stick around this lane. I suppose, what's the kill potential? Until crit's got Fade Vault. That's and until Arteezy, I suppose Arteezy has waveform now. I mean, S4 is low HP right now, so that makes it a bit more viable. But right now, S4, once he gets some HP regen through the Tango's, even if he takes some more damage, he'll salve up. There is very small kill potential unless he messes up. Oh, this Acid Spray is making life a living hell for Universe. He only has two armor normally. At least the Ogre is a lot happier in there with his 8 base armor, but Crit may not be so happy. Caught inside the river. Crush will be available from Jirax. He's not body blocking at all. S4 doesn't need to be part of this. He wasn't going to get close enough to get the Iron Shell on Jirax, which would have given a uh, kill potential. Jirax just secures the rune, which is at least nice, since that could be some kind of haste or invis, which could mess up your mid lane or... You never really know what those runes are going to be, so it's important to get them early on. Ogre gets the DD bottom, but again, he can't really use this. He's just going to suicide to Roche. Nothing too crazy there, so uh, good starts for the, the supports with their movements. Um, the big thing for OG with their defensive lane is they didn't actually get a pull through early with Fly, so the Clockwork got a lot of experience. He had like a double creep wave at his tower. Sumail playing very aggressive on, on his OD. No boots on either player just yet. You can see him actually looking for more kills. The two points up in Urshock, just hoping for that extra 10% slow to keep him in range of Anna. Underneath the under, okay, universe, <laughs> you can battery us all you want, but when you got a Dazzle in that lane, you're not bringing down the Alchemist before he, like, before he hits level 6, is that like the only opportunity for universe? He's winning the CS battle, though, 14 CS to the 11 of Alchemist, that's what, kind of what I mentioned. Yes, Alk, very bad matchup mid versus Ursa, but not exactly great in the safe lane as well. This dual Top lane, Jirax able to get this done as uh, Wayfall, bring Arteezy back in range of the tier 1 tower. It was just Jirax slipping under the cover of Invis, and with the Iron Shells on him, Arteezy's not a healthy man, Jirax, in fact, he's going to blip the sprint on, he's got Crush up. Arteezy has mana for the waveform away if he wants to trigger off the one charges. But this turns into almost like a, like a, I was like, a standoff. Until Crit picks him up, Jirax, there's your double crush, S4, burning down Crit, needs a little bit more damage with the waveform, the body block from Arteezy won't do enough, he'll get one kill, however, and if Arteezy can pick up a double, it's going to make it worth it. More than worth it for Atiz. It's two solo kills as well, so that gets him all the way up to level five. 
Doesn't have much HP or mana left, but the beauty of this is your support can then respawn and come and help out your lane if you really need. But now the Rubik will TP mid. Look for a pick up on Honor. He's used the banish, and that's Q time for Crit to engage. Yeah, Crit slips in behind, gets the grabs, the mail, the clap, plus the extra swipes. Anna is brought down by Rubik while up on top lane. Artizi's on the run into the tree lines. He needs more life to survive. Moves up, sandwiched in between the two iron shells. The stun is out, but Jirax into the trees, down to 22 HP. He's regenning with the tangos, but where's the TP support? Rotation's coming in from Crit. This was scouted out by the Observer Ward. So Jirax knows his time is low. S4 will tank it, basically running cover fire. Oh. So S, so Jirax can escape, but still Crit. Fresh Observer Ward down. He's looking for that slaughter. He's gonna find him. Attack him once. The crush from Jirax. Run backwards. Where do you go? It's a rock and a hard play from the Crit. From Crit with the Fade Bolt into the trees. Jirax takes the hit. With the sprint, it was a guaranteed heal, kill. With the amplification of damage, his TP was still on cooldown because he rotated up there with the TP, so he thought he could get out just by getting to that shot, but then he realized he had to walk through the lane, and that is a worry for the OG early game. All three lanes being won on CS by EG, as well as the kills being picked up now. I love this maneuver from Universe. You understand too when you see that Iron Town that No Town wants to just slip inside the jungle and farm up as much as he can. Universe comes over to try and contest that if possible. Crit. Ah, okay, Crush is out. And this will be maybe an easy kill. Crit's looking to deny himself up to Ancient, so Jirax has to time this up quite right. OD imprisonment, that's a level three. And that is one very, very dead crit. Yeah, Jirax has been all over the map to try and make sure they can get these kills early on. He's paid for it with his life a couple of times, but. On all the impact has been there. Fly level five. It's amazing that they're giving him the solo bottom lane, and they just don't want No Tail laning against the clock. Like he does farm in theory faster in the jungle with the Greebles greed, but does kind of give EG a lot of room to make whatever plays they want around the map. Ursa's smoked up with the ogre. Could theoretically go hunting for the alchemist, but doesn't look like that's going to be the case. No Tail is coming down. Yeah. Fly is walking straight into the clutches of Fuzzy Wuzzy. Samael starts. All right, doesn't actually let the uh, the clap go. Uses the slowest set from Zyne to make sure he's 100% in range and flying. The Lincoln Shallow Grave, the TP's available while Universe has the Battery Assault. Fly knows he can't get out of this one. Yep. So, good rotation from EG. They'll find the kill. Top lane, Arteezy once again. Every time we see a kill in another lane, we're going to look to Arteezy to be harassed. Yeah, this Darkseas ladder do a really good at, uh, do a good job of just recognizing when they can go aggressive, when the EG lanes uh, and, and supporting cast they know elsewhere the trees. on the map. Arteezy. Again with the one charger, so we can waveform out. S4 being attacked. He's still iron shelling, iron shell, iron shell burning Arteezy. But it's not enough That's damage. Four heroes enough. converging. Okay. Oh, if you want to commit, OG, this is that. Universe is coming up here, but he's going to find himself running into a lot. Clogs. Oh, okay, he's going to get imprisoned. RTZ, more TP supports on the way. That's the Ursa coming in. Samoa to join the fight. Clockwork, hook shot, tries to get a little bit of a stun. With the Cogs, splits up the fight. They'll get a one for one trade off. S4 still trapped inside the Cogs. We'll break free now. The Astral in prison, keeping Samoa out of this fight. Ends up being a one-for-one -one trade off with OG committing heavier resources. It's still that bottom lane freed up for Notel, which is all you ever really want with the Alchemist is to kind of create that space for him to free farm. Curious to see what build Notel goes for. This is a player who's known for going for the more fighting style builds of Alchemist, going for the solo crest, the Shadow Blade, the Blink Daggers, not going for that typical Radiance Octarine. He is the Naga player, and that's of course the playstyle on that hero, but we'll see what he does on out. Especially when he's running in a safe lane. Universe gonna hold him inside the cogs with the battery assault. The creep wave's there. This isn't really a kill opening for him. It's set us up on top lane where Arteezy's having to waveform out. So on both fronts, no tell. Universe just wanted to take the neutrals there. Just charges in, takes a neutral camp. Arteezy at top still being chased down, but has the one charges. Very, very difficult hero to kill when you got such heavy spammers uh, ability-wise on the lane. So there's always one charges for RTZ to use, plus having waveform and strength more available. Oh, there's more map control gained by OG taking that top tier one tower. It's Fly who picks it up. Fly has 14 CS, tower kill now. He has the safe lane. He's almost level six. He's being way more fun than you'd normally expect to see on him. But that's kind of as a result of the, the pressure coming out from EG. Felt safer leaving this alchemist in the jungle for a lot of this game. 
You still have to give respect then to the EG supports. Yeah, Ogre is like Zai has been the sacrificial land. We've seen it and take one for the team many times. But uh, you've also got the Rubik. A lot of money getting into the hands of Crit, having those arcane boots. And now with the mid, mid space being given to him, trying to get close enough to that level six. So then he can steal Astral, then he can play around with, with OG's initiation targets. Yeah, it looks like the priority is going to get, get him that six of the mid lane now. He's kind of sitting there alone, so things will slow down a bit now and see whether EG try and make another move around the hookshot of Universe. Also so has kind of the, the levels he needs to get involved fairly soon. Might be looking to try and complete his Mask of Madness before making any kind of big rotations. And also, for EG, if you find a key pickoff or a kill, that sets you up to, for claiming Roshan. <laughs> Still waiting for, still actually waiting for that to properly happen. What do we get? This, like, okay, sprint. Crit managed to steal sprint. Not the ability he wanted. No. <laughs> OD swept in afterwards, but it's too late to get that Astral. It's one of the, the great things about playing the Rubik against OD. Such a short cooldown. Nuke as well as save. And uh, S4. He really doesn't want to let Arteezy feel safe on this top lane. Arteezy's net worth has really started to drop off a little bit. Obviously, the Alchemist is always going to get ahead as uh, No Tell stretches over 5,000 now. Uh, but the Morphling sitting at 3.9k. Long way to get to his items. Sumail having a little bit of issues, trying to come down for that 10 minute rune. Gonna get imprisoned up, support <laughs> there. Universe! Hook shots in! Actually isolates Anna, forcing S4 back out again. Sumail trying to fight, but now they're back inside the cogs. Locked in with Universe. Crit has the astral imprisonment available. Can buy a little bit of space, does it himself. And now the Ursa pops back out again. He'll die as it was Anna's astral. Does the damage when he reappears. Yeah, Sumail ran back in after kind of getting out of there, which was perhaps not the ideal play to be making there. And Jirax, I, he just missed the crush while he had the iron shell up on Zai. Yeah, really great fight from OG, just making sure they brought numbers, even with Sumail having the haste rune. They still get the edge in that engagement just by sheer numbers. But is still okay with this. You're getting okay with a stun. S4, isolated battery assault, making it difficult, but the fact pulls him out of the cogs. He'll get burned on his way through. But S4 playing his position nicely. No tells almost got relic. He says, who needs an armlet? Like all these Alchemist players getting armlet, that you're just slowing down your radiance by getting armlet is what he's kinda of saying. Typically you do get the item because it makes you near impossible to gank in the mid lane. When you've got chemical rage with the armlet, there's great synergy between the HP regen uh, with the armlet itself. And you get a huge amount of HP to fight around the Radiance, but you're not being pressured if you're just free farming away. There's no reason that the, the Radiance Rush doesn't work. He's got some bonus HP from the Treads, and he's saying, this is enough for me. This is the EG play whenever they run that Dire Side Earth, so you send some mail inside the pit. He's got enough, he can solo Roshan, and the other three, they go for the gank. They look to create the space, and now they have the vision. It's over on fly, Universal Hookshot of Fireball, a quick imprisonment. That's the one out from Crit, so they isolate out Jirax, locked inside the cogs with the battery assault. Samel will come over, he's already got the Aegis in Waterman. <laughs> oh, I suppose you can't have everything in the world. Uh, Slaughter being denied up by the neutral. Get off my blast! Yikes. And that's... that's hurt, hurts for EG, and they do get the Aegis and Sumail halfway to his Blink Dagger, so ideally they try and boost him up to that Blink money by farming some Ancients so that they can make use of the Aegis. If he gets Aegis and Blink for a couple of minutes, there's a lot of aggressive maneuvers EG can make. But one of the weaknesses of this EG lineup is they really need to just create space for Arteezy to become that big late game carry. They can't really push buildings and they don't want to get Arteezy too involved in the fights because he isn't farming as well as he'd like to based on the pressure from the Darkseer Slaughter. So the four man EG unit that wants to gank and fight but can't really push. TP top is scouted by the Observer Ward that was freshly planted so we know Jerks is up here although it looks like he's going to immediately show himself anyway. What they don't see is Anna. Anna and Fly, the TP coming into mid lane so Zai will appear and reveal this. That actually kind of saved Crit's life, judging on the position the Fly and Anna were moving. They could have gone into the jungle and killed Crit as he was rotating down to the mid lane. Both EG supports back behind the T1 tower to relative safety, and in fact, Universe. Hook shot, now he jumps, 
Gets the cogs out. Astral imprisonment, just a defensive one. Zion still has that fire blast plus the ignite. So they lock him in with the blade melt turned on from universe. No one really wants to attack him. The stun from T-Rex keeping critic control of the mouth. Back into the fight with the slow. No tail arrives with the radiance burn. This is the worst time for EG to fight. They've already lost two, and they've got no other choice. Samael's on the front line. Zai cannot save his teammate. Samael will fall. The Aegis will be triggered. Zai back behind the tower. Won't die the radiance burn, but Samael stranded alone and with no friends. And the tier one tower to go down as well. Oh, Fantastic maneuvering from OG. Yeah, it's the same as last game. They get the radiance and immediately, rather than using the radiance as a farming tool, why not use it as a fighting tool? Between the mischance to the AoE burn damage per second being 50, which is pretty big considering these fights can last a while with the sustain of the Dazzle Heal, the Grave, as well as the OD saves. And Darkseid can surge the Alchemist around. He could have actually killed the Ogre there, but he went for the team play, which was let's help make sure we kill the Ursa twice. Doesn't really matter if we kill the Ogre or not. The Ursa is the big claim, and OG find themselves in an amazing position. They've got a mech coming soon on the oh, darks here. Uh oh, He thinks he's good, but he doesn't understand. There's an invisible outworld devourer just looking to knob him from behind. And maybe, okay, imprisonment and just drop the nuke. <laughs> All right. Message sent, message delivered, and message received. Yeah, overkill, but in the context of not knowing where the rest of EG were, you're kind of worried that they may be swooping in. No, not too big a deal. And Anna doesn't have his four stuff yet, so he's worried about getting hooked and then brought down inside the cogs once he's used that astral. He wants to reposition to make sure he can not stand still and set universe up. EG need to somehow get control of this game back again. It comes with the blink of Sumail. The blink is where he can then look to synergize with Universe, where you initiate him with the clockwork, you immediately followed up where Sumail can then blink inside the cogs and go on a hero like the OD. Go on someone like a Darkseer. But problem is, his blink's coming a bit later than he would have liked because of that death there. That was a death with Aegis. And the full staff for Anna is going to be up very, very soon. He's only a couple hundred gold away, so they'll have at least one full staff. I've got to imagine they'll be going from multiple. Perhaps even Darkseer goes one now that he's got a mech, and that's just going to make life very difficult for EG. The other big thing they've got to do is just keep getting RTZ farmed. He is their alchemist, so to speak. He's the big late game threat that they're looking to, to carry them now that things are kind of going a bit grim for them here in the early game. I suppose that is the upside, right? Like, Arteezy almost able to, well, if he can, if he can copy the Alchemist, he can turn the power of OG against them. Keeping that alive might be a little bit more problematic with an OD on the field, but the Lincoln Sphere is finally out. The Morphling, still very difficult to kill. He's died once, yes, but with the Lincoln Sphere up, and with 11 levels, uh, Arteezy should be able to play a little bit more aggressive and try and force OG to react to him, as opposed to what OG's been doing so far, which is calling every play they want. Jirax, waveform forward, Arteezy gonna miss that, but support's here. Crits in the neighborhood, but with no blink daggers of EG, they got no way to close the distance. Yeah, OG just hitting their timings early, like, yeah, Morphling can't really be ganked now that he's got a Lincoln Sphere, but he's also not a threat. The Ethereal Blade is where he becomes a threat, but OG have his timing well before that item's going to be up for Arteezy's Morphling. They're going to have an Octarine Core on No-Tail. It's an item picked up this early that's going to give him a huge amount of survivability. He's 1,500 HP, even 1,700 with Strength Treads. And then he's got the, the Life Seal as well when he's casting spells, the Radiance damage, the Acid damage. He's going to be near unkillable with Chemical Rage up. They can start pushing, breaking the EG base, taking control of their side of the map. And then you're farming way more than a Morphling is, and it's kind of a, a one-carry lineup against an OG side that's going to have three or four farmed heroes. Darkseer is getting a lot of farm. Slander is going to have a Blink Dagger soon. Mm -hmm. You can pull Ag Scepters. No great Ag Scepters to pull this game, which is where OG will not want this game to drag into the like 40, 50, 60 minute stages, because that's when Morphling will become more powerful than the Alchemist once he catches up and can make that replicate. If there was great Ag Scepters to pull, it's maybe different because OG can really scale once Alchemist starts pulling Ags. But this is a game where Alk is going to get five, six slotted, and want to descend the game, because yep. there's no axe to pull. Yep. You, know, you actually don't even want to give one to the OD. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> can sometimes hurt you. It's actually like one of the worst axe upgrades in the game. All right, so EG. Oh, we just Blade Mail. Blade Mail with Terrain Core. This is what we saw from Sumail in the late game yesterday. This item, it's a shorter cooldown. It effectively reduces 25% of incoming damage when you activate Blade Mail, because you're getting that lifesteal from it, so really fantastic pickup, but that's got to come with the, the Octarine Core. 
Uh, TZ seems to be okay with this. Okay, Alchemist, want to show yourself up on the top lane? Not a problem. Make a replicate, start farming it over inside the jungle. Obviously, you're not going to get the bonuses from it. Now, TZ's actually already TPing out. So let's see Illusion do the farming, and he just goes down the bottom lane. Make the most out of these sidelines. The second OG comes to try and stop him, he just pushes to a different lane. And in fact, OG, they're going to change the tempo. A smoke underneath the Dire Observer Ward with a four-man maneuver. They're worried about... Oh, Rish just can't be up anytime soon, so you, they're you actually going for You a can't gank. kill the Morphling. Like, oh, this is going to happen where you just jump out to Replicate. Arteezy's already back on the top lane. Yeah, Arteezy's going to tuck himself in. He realizes there's smoke. He doesn't know where they are on the map, so... Safety first, he says, but... Anna's going to show himself on bottom. Yeah, at this point you realize EG either saw the smoke or they've kind of put two and two together and realized with as many heroes missing from the map what's going on, so OG will just pop on out say, well, we're not going to get any kills, but what we can do is take these towers, T1 and a T2. Whether or not they go for two kind of depends on whether they want to defend their other lanes. Arteezy is going to be putting pressure onto the top lane, so... OG are in a position where they can take towers and also defend them if they want to do both. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, EG won't want to fight this one. When the BKB is up on some out, then maybe, but they need the money. That's why that tier 1 tower on top is just so important to EG. They need the cash. Yeah, you're going to lose your bottom, you probably lose your easy access to Roshan. Uh, maybe with the heavy rotations coming over from OG, EG may not even want to fight this. They managed to trigger off the Lincoln Sphere. As the Alchemist Illusion sitting there, Arteezy waveforms up, Anna still right behind him. Crit and Samal are in the neighborhood. Replicate of the OD is created. So Arteezy has a small little way to get down. In fact, he joins the rest of his team! They pick up, throw him back with crit, gets a double stun, but it's already too late. With the Morgling dropping down and Zai copping huge amounts of damage from the Shadow Wave of Fly. That is not what EG needed now. Losing that big hero, losing the Morphling. Arteezy is, we're kind of going to that point where he is their one hope. Their, the game plan around the Ursa and Clockwork has not worked, and you're kind of entering that stage where your way to win this game with EG rests solely on Arteezy's performance as Morphling. He's getting a lot of farm, he's behind the Alchemist as is always going to be the case. He's still in a position where this game can turn for EG with his split push and just pressure on the other lanes. But the jump is out, they managed to find Samael a little bit too far out. He does actually have the Enrage plus regeneration, but the problem is he needs to get away from Jirax who has Crush available. So you stop the Enrage, there goes your first Crush. Damage won't be huge, but it will be enough. Both of the big cores of EG picked off within the space of a minute. That is very worrying. They've got to get Arteezy back out there, not getting caught out. No Tail's just going to be in the front lines now with Octarine and the Blade Mail. You're looking at very high uptime, like almost a third of the time you can have Blade Mail online. Uh, no Tail just playing this smart too. He turned he the Radiant that's... off. Until he wow. got replicated, and then he turned it back on again. So no tell is making sure that Arteezy can't find any more power out of copying the Alchemist. What a beautiful flower. No tell is playing incredible, considering how much he got pressured in lane by the Clockwork plus Ogre Magi. He has turned things around, and the whole OG team, their draft has come together, and right now, it's really do or die. For EG, they're facing tournament elimination. They need to keep the pressure up with Arteezy at top, but the problem is they now have they now have OG knocking on their door. <laughs> and OG's ready to fight with a fresh blink on the Dark Seer. The initiations become a hell of a lot better. Arteezy's doing the best thing he can. Force out the top lane, get a reaction. Jirax is the man to come back, and he actually blinks up. He's hunting Arteezy into the tree line, who waveforms, starts to TP. Jirax, oh! oh! He gets the stun! He finds me? him! He isolates Arteezy, body blocking him out as well. Arteezy now tries to fight, but the rest of OG, they're on their way. Special delivery for Arteezy. OG, the delivery service. They'll hold him in with a back, except more iron shells. He'll take the damage from the imprisonment when he comes out, and Anna is on a monster kill streak. And Arteezy is pushing up the daisies. EG do the best thing they can. They're trying to get Roshan. Samel's inside the pit. No tell knows you gotta go down there and check it with the weave out as well. They're losing armor. Samael locked in the corner, trying to man mode this on the telekinesis. Maybe he's got enough damage to bring down No tell. No, he doesn't. He's got nothing of the sort. Crits on the run. S4 is right behind him. Back and back in again. EG, this has gone bad to worse to absolutely disastrous.
And it's not even done yet. Jirax found Universe. I'm so He may speechless. not even get back to base. Support's coming in from S4, so we might be able to actually jump and get the back. No, Universe stays close enough to the Tier 3 tower. And now OG will even steal Roshan from EG. Jirax, predictive crush. Somebody, somebody check this guy's PC. What, what was that? That is just an insane read of the game. Doing it at the time has the TP was coming. Down they go! No steal! Push out! Universe! Bail, 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 bail! Oh, the crush is there! He that's... went for the glory play! I mean, that's when you know that, that that sums up this game for EG. They have to make super high-risk, desperate plays because they are in the weeds right now. There is very little pathways back into this game, and it comes through some miraculous individual plays. Universe trying to step it up there. Uh, TZ trying to push the limit of his here in the top lane, but OG just have their number right now. Man, so many people got confidence in Evil Geniuses based off their performance yesterday, but OG, maybe they're the other team we have to look at. We're all labeling DC as the one flying underneath the radar, but this team play from OG is unbelievably good. The draft has worked for them. The stability of the team looks fantastic. If they win this going into the grand final, either Advinum or DC are going to have a very rough fight on their hands. And there, there's a reason Fly and No-Tail are two-time major winners. Captain Fly, and then they've had Seb uh, coaching the team for some time as well, giving them a lot of insight as far as the drafts and preparations for these matches go, and it's really showing here against EG. They seem to have figured out the North American team and OG with a Shivers Guard now complete on No-Tail. This is another item which benefits so much from the Octarine Call. The shorter cooldown, the lifestyle you get from this No-Tail. He's not afraid of anything as long as he's got Chemical Rage up. He is unkillable. Here's the big moment. The Radiant Sun still don't have that replicant for another 10 seconds for Arteezy. So he can't use No-Tail against his own team. EG, they have to hold here or it's all over. Universe is looking for an angle to try and get a nice hook shot over. There's not much to get. The small advantage is Nortel didn't turn the Radiance off in time once Replicate was back up. So Arteezy will just start pushing out the bottom. The top lane's already got some momentum to it, but in comes OG again. The, ra the, the tier 3 tower is dropping down very low. Nortel moving forward for the stun. He's only going to concoct himself. Of course, being the Replicate. How does EG even go in on this? Uh, there's no easy way. You've got to go when Chemical Rage is down, but it's got, what, like, eight or nine seconds of downtime because of the Octarine Core. It is the tiniest of windows, and you've got to burst him incredibly fast. There's a Grave there, there's an OD Astral, there's two great saves on the OG side, so you've got to go on him while Clockwork catches someone on the back lines, like goes on a Dazzle or an OD, but... Okay, Arteezy got enough money from farming the mid lane, he's finished up an E-Blade. So okay. they've got that pop damage. Maybe this is even just a sack. Like, EG just stall it up, make, make them waste as much time as possible, and you accept the fact that this bottom rack is gone. EG cannot fight. If they fight, they probably lose this entire series off the back of that fight. So yeah. just continue to farm, cut your losses, and wait for what is a critical game-ending maneuver, which is probably two lanes of racks for OG. Yeah, the second lane of racks is going to be perhaps or probably where EG make their stand. They're also trying to make their stand when the Aegis expires, so if they can somehow keep these lanes pushed out, which right now that's what Arteezy has done. Mid lane has pushed the tier two, top lane is pushed out, so they probably bought themselves time to take that next fight without an Aegis on the OD and with a BKB on their Ursa. And that's the critical thing. So you've got E-Blade and you've got the BKB up and running. The rest of it's going to be down to the EG supports plus offlaner to control the positioning of the fight. Universe with a four staff. Obviously the cogs are the greatest way to keep OG split up in the fight. And this allows Samael just to go ham. He wants a one target isolated Gank. That would be the dream. But OG, five man smoke maneuver. Yep. They're not looking to give him this opportunity. Oh, and they no. jump up all oh, the quick away. Samael, he jumped down to the Ancients. He'll TP all the way back home. But now it's Zai. Four star from Universe will get him into safety. Cheesy may need to get back soon. Ideally, he needs to try and get round, catch someone like a Dazzle. Burst the Dazzle before a grave can be used. But Dazzle's got a hood. Dazzle is ready for the Morphling burst damage. The itemization from Fly, 17 one charges even being saved. He can quickly heal himself up should Arteezy try and blow him up. It's actually such a great steal to get from Crit. The Astral Imprisonment, meaning that No-Tail can't just beat away at the tower. They drive the creep way back every time. How do you stop OG from pushing? Banish them.
So yeah, RTZ no. gets the tier 2 tower, here comes the TP back, Asus Spray stolen by the Rubik. All these things are slowly adding up for EG, which gives him a fighting chance to force our forward from Anna. Ribble get the grab, to mail, opens up, the OD still has the Aegis Immortal. Remember he wants to die, the wall and the back, dragging EG back into death. This is OG with the big push, buyback is up, Aegis Immortal has been triggered. So Arteezy's back to the front lines, but then the fourth up, Girax, he pushed Sai into his crush. And this is the mid racks. EGA again in a position where they can't fight, they don't have their stun controllers. The, the initiation for EG, the, the way these heroes work together just seems like it's it's so difficult to find OG. You hook one, but then OG reposition you. They use their vacuum, they use the crush, they use the saves from the OD Astral and the Dazzle Grave. The damage just isn't there, Sumail's Ursa gets really dealt with well by the weave. The bonus armor coming from that. There's a Greaves and a pipe on S4's Darkseer. This is an almost insurmountable item lead on OG more than anything at this point. And we're going to see it again. So this is the jump. Anna thought he could actually have a crack. Obviously, it's just a replicate, but some mail. That was the small opening he had. The one hero which got isolated. Thanks to the clockwork cogs. But at that point, S4 is back already. Showed great control with a wall up, EG. I just can't fight. The you cogs... kill off the one target, which OG was happy to lose. Yeah, the cogs are almost working against EG there. Sumail popped his BKB to go on the OD, but once the OD banished himself, he couldn't get to another target. That advantage, 25,000. And then about 11k in the experience. EG. They're trying to beat the aggressors, the five-man smoke maneuver, but they got scanned! OG saw them coming, no wants to and fight. now they, they weave in preparation. No tell moves over, they see the Ursa, it's just a replicate at the moment, and Samael jumping on the back lines, finds Fly, Shallow Grave will protect him, he needs a better target, moving between them, the PKB timing wasted, Fly will be able to drop now, and Morgling hard, fighting hard, Jurax will drop down low, Zai wants to finish him off, but really, it's up to Samael if he can do any level of damage, or it's over, it's too OG, OG have done it! They've taken out a once TI champion, and OG will advance to their third major grand final. Maybe even to win it for the third time as well. There's no talent fly. These two, they've been playing together for a long time. They've seen some great success with.